yeah, why don't we do a talent review? Because the talent announcements come out for the major. Because the major's in like four days. Not even four days, is it? It's like less than, probably, whatever. Talent review. <laughs> a new series where I get to shit talk all my colleagues from the safety of my own stream. Now, what's great about this is, and I did tweet this out, but it was a tweet that didn't get a lot of engagement. Look how many members of broadcast talent they hired for a fucking Brazilian major. 23 plus one. They actually did it. They did 23 plus one. Loads of people as well pointed that out, right, in the Reddit thread, reacting to it. The people didn't know about it. Just so you know, Brazilians, uh, right, because of a game that's, I think, illegal, but it's like a gambling game called Jogo de Bicho or something, right? Um, it, 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 it's a numbers game where each number is associated with an animal and 24 is associated with the deer, right? And the deer, for some reason in Brazilian culture, the deer is associated with gay men, I think because the word for deer sounds similar to a disparaging word for homosexual people in, pro in Portuguese, right? That is literally what's going on there, right? So just so you know, if you've never come across this phenomenon before, because I'll tell you how I came across it. I saw it was like a Brazilian account and they'd like, someone had a birthday cake, and on the candle, it was their 24th birthday, and it was like, happy 23 plus one birthday. <laughs> In Portuguese. <laughs> That's how mad it is, right? And then I was like, nah, but that can't be real. That sounds, that sounds like madness. Like, And then I looked into it more, and uh, the players, they don't, they don't fucking... Uh, wear the number 24 shirt when they go away on international duty and sometimes managers have given made players wear it as a punishment there was a big investigation into it you can go look this up it's fucking mind-blowing so when i saw 20 sorry 20 i want to be respectful 23 plus one people hired for the brazilian major i'm like oh it's uh, it's none of this is real richard why do you get stressed it's just it's all, none of it can be real. It really is a simulation where everything just falls into itself until you experience the final death dream and become one with the big fucking computer that's been running it all. I am but an algorithm in its chain. <laughs> like, so it's fine. Uh, just crazy. So, anyway, yeah, this is all real. Look it up. Because I'm I, it, the one thing, when I'm dead, right, the one thing I'll take great pride in is I have, like, pot, I have, made people aware of this like every opportunity i've got and now more and more people are, are understand like they even in politics right if there's ever any like bills for like gay rights or anything like that when it goes to parliament they just put like, like the number 24 is just not like on it they just say like look it's, yeah it's a 24 thing <laughs> it's a 24 thing it's mad like honestly it's so mental anyway so they hired 24 people Right? They've hired 24 people. Which It's just too perfect. But obviously, like, one of the things I do, because I hate talent announcement days, and yes, guess what? Right? This is an ESL event in Brazil. <laughs> I can think of... No, like, if I go to that event, I die. Like, I, I'm 95% on that. It would be a miracle to come out of that one alive. There's a number of interested parties in my demise if I go to that event, right? So, why, in the Reddit thread, people were still going, Ha! No, Richard Lewis, I'm done. I'm fucking done, guys. I am done. I've even turned down more event work this year. I keep telling people, like, no, no, no don't want to do it it's not good for my mental health like i'm i'm not doing it right but they were good they were ha no richard no for we've both publicly said we will never work with esl because of the saudi arabia thing. If it's an esl event you save it's a given you don't need to keep posting about it about how it's good we're not going to be there and again foreign in brazil are you fucking dizzy are you fucking dizzy mate the only way i could make out of brazil alive would be if i just threw thor in there like Oh, Duncan, come over here a minute, blood. 
we let you live, Richard. We've got the real one, and that's that. I mean, that would be that would be the fucking end of it. Sorry, Duncan. <laughs> Consider the package revoked. Like we're not going to Brazil, guys. No matter how much you mean come to Brazil or whatever, not happening. I, I want to give uh, my my thoughts about you know like the the broadcasts. Obviously, I thought there was a lot of positives uh, here. And uh, a, a couple of negatives, that, you know, I'm happy to happy to talk about. And one one that's just going to upset everybody. <laughs> Whatever, fuck it. Uh, we'll get to it. Um, so this is the on air on air talent. I just I'll, I'll I'll shrink myself so I can pretend I'm one of them, the anointed few. Oh, just before we even get into breaking down, thumbs up, thumbs down. You know, fart noise, all of that stuff. Um, Overwatch fart noise, nerf this fart noise. Uh, do want to say, uh, obviously, you know, look, I've said I wouldn't work for ESL, but as I've always maintained, you have to make your own moral and ethical choices in life, and not everybody supports some of the ones I've made. You know, for example, you know, people get upset. Oh, but you've been sponsored by gambling companies. Gambling's evil. It's like, I don't feel that way. And I don't think all gambling is wrong. So, you know, I've, I've never really been inclined to believe that. So I operate on my own set of moral values, and everyone has to do the same. So, you know, I, I wouldn't do it, but I don't hit on any of these people for doing it, especially in an industry where opportunities are limited. And some of these people as well, it's their first opportunity to go to a major in some cases and stuff like this. So, so just saying, don't want to get into that. Start with the hosts, my area of expertise. Uh, Stunner and Freya, uh, it's good to see Stunner back in, in the chair in the saddle. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, good friends with Trace and um, he's somebody that, uh, I feel does get slept on a little bit in a horse, in a horse roll. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what he does because when when he's on the desk in his desk segments, because I think they're going to contrast a lot with uh, Freya's. Interestingly, and uh, you know Freya is very structured and wants to know where everything is uh, when you work with her on a on a desk. Uh, Stunner is a bit more laissez faire, a bit looser, but sometimes that can obviously, as we see in pro league, it can just lead to breakdowns in segments. Sometimes funny, sometimes not so much, you know. But uh, but that's often not his fault. He's usually working with two analysts who are just griefing him. So you know what can you do? But everyone will be on their uh, best behaviour uh, at the major. And listen, I, like I said, I like Stunner and Freya and uh, glad to see them get picked up. Uh, Veracity, I've seen a lot of her this year. Really like her energy. Uh, interesting to see what she does uh, on this kind of occasion. Uh, obviously a major, it's a big deal to, you know, big, big debut. But I've said this for a, I've said this for a while. When it comes to desk hosting, you know, there's not been a lot of people stepping into that role because it's not a particularly glamorous role. It's not a particularly fun role. It's not a role you get a lot of recognition for. And ultimately, if you're doing, you're like, the best you can say about being a good desk host is if you're doing your job well, everything works. That's it. There's no sizzle on the steak, essentially. So it is a very un, uh, unappreciated role out of all of the broadcast talent. So, look. Parlor, ah man, Parlor's a desk host for me. I, I don't fuck with it. I think like he's a guy you need to be doing all the wacky ancillary content. Like he's a YouTuber, man. Like and and he's got that YouTube mindset. And the YouTube mindset is like you've got to be able to talk a certain way and operate a certain way and lean into jokes and lean into bits and come up with like spontaneously funny bits on the fly. And they're all they're all of his strengths. And it's like I would have had him in the sideline role, maybe. I would have maybe, much like they've done with Anders, we'll get to. I'd have maybe come up with something for Parlor. Like I think Parlor, there's there's ways you can use him, but like his desk hosting i don't know if it's like he gets nervous or he doesn't enjoy it and it you know maybe something translates in the delivery but for me i always find his segments to be really slow and a bit ponderous and we don't get to the bits we need to get to at the right speed or the right tempo and he doesn't interject when he needs to and it's just like there's a lot of little skills to it, and, and you know, not everyone's going to be able to do it. So, 
it is what it is. He, he's the one where it's like, eh. and I'll also just add though, four deaths costs. Holy shit. Wish this had happened in my day. Wish we could have had four fucking deaths costs when I was doing it. I, I get to do a quarter of the work for the same rate. Fan fucking tastic. You mean I don't have to work every single fucking day of the event being the first one in and the last one out has to open the show and close the fucking show every day without fail. You mean I can not I can have a day off? Wow. That would have been great. But in general, I think that's an interesting selection of hosts, all with different energies, different skill sets. And if the production, and this is key, let them do the segments they want, it could get interesting. Like, well, like I'd like to actually see different styles of segment with different styles of host and make it a bit more interesting, give a bit more texture to the desk segments because, you know, as Maniac was talking about, and, and it, Thorin and Maui as well, obviously, on Snake and Banter, if you go watch that episode that's come out, you know, they're right. I, I think analyst segments, that they're, they're the one thing that's really lagging behind on a CSGO broadcast now. We've even got shoulder content like at an average level now well done esl you finally thought oh skits and funny little bits of content excellent you finally brought that up to speed now can we actually have analysis segments with like real shit uh, as for the casters uh the return of machine and sponge obviously machine's been having some time off uh you're gonna get to hear them come back uh obviously you know knowing a little bit behind the scene machine's been champing at the bit to get back and to do it in brazil he loves brazil you know loves traveling you know he's one of those guys really loves the lifestyle loves the esports lifestyle because probably what you don't know about alex is like obviously he's he spent a long time grinding a long time working directly for esl casting games you've never heard of that don't even exist anymore doing it for a fucking pittance uh working in an office in fucking cologne you know that looks like fucking mordor so you know now that it's his time you know good looking guy young guy top of his game big celebrity no one likes taking time out when you're fucking at that you know at that peak and uh you're, you're always worried like am i gonna be as relevant you know when i get back but he's gonna fuck he's gonna deliver probably the best casts he's ever done like he's gonna be so up for this and nailing this and back with sponge so it's gonna be great you go and harry my boys they've had a weird bit of a break at pro league so you know they get to do it on like you know the biggest stage again super happy for them well deserved that they continue more of that young talent that's come through uh moses and sadikist uh that's the duo now moses and sadikist is obviously the duo it's no longer moses and anders and obviously no longer henry and sadikist and that's what they're going with and i think it's a good pairing in general uh, sadikist <laughs> God, Matt's crazy, you know, in, in like a good way. Like, he is so fucking happy, like, to walk up to the line where everyone gets scared of, of being on. Like, when you're a broadcast talent. Can I make this joke? Probably. And, and everyone now is so conditioned, like, hyper conditioned, that I just don't risk it. It could be a big laugh. It could be the end of my career. <laughs> you know, that's that's just how the world is now. And that you have to think about that. E and to think about it live in a broadcast, everyone is just now conditioned, like, don't make the joke, don't say the thing, don't do the word. Sadakis don't give a fuck about any of that. <laughs> he's like, whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, because he's got so much other shit going on in his life, I feel like every time I listen to, uh, like, Sadakis cast, I just think, like, I never know where it's going to go. And what I love about the energy of the two is, I get the impression that Moses doesn't know where it's going to go. That actually, like, Moses is a little bit, like, of a hostage. Like, to fucking Matt's kind of, like, exuberance. And it just creates this, like, super interesting energy. Because, like, when Matt's on, he is the greatest to ever do it in CSGO. Like, for, in my opinion, for fucking real. Uh, he, he is the greatest play-by-play -play commentator we've ever had. But also, when you start adding that little bit of danger to it, and you pair him off with someone with Moses who can do absolutely anything on a broadcast. Again, it, it's like a super interesting dynamic. And, like... They're probably going to go, Richard, what are you saying this for? No, 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 no. This is these are just my opinions boys i can I, if i'm wrong i'm wrong but i but i i get i just get the impression that they're together because they both really really respect each other and but also there's just this like moses is just always super like oh god 
Is it today? Does Matt do the thing? But I'll also add, you know, not just about the energy and the dynamic that they have. I think it's like just a really good foil where you have like a super hype play by play guy who's always doing clever wordplay, can fill, can talk about anything. And, you know, you have Moses who he can just slip into any role. He can do a bit of play by play if you need him to. He can do some analysis if you need him to. He can come up with a joke on the fly. He can be funny. It's like it's a really good, it's, a, it's an underrated duo because, you know, obviously Sadakis being Sadakis, it's going to get a lot of the attention right um and it's not as polished and as fluid as other duos but it's exciting and it's like really you know when they're on it it's great it's up there with anyone else so yeah super happy that they're giving it a go and hope it continues uh and then obviously Lorna's and scrawny you know my thoughts on my boys uh super happy they're doing an esl major all things good to see you know petty grievances let's say put to bed and so ultimately the only thing you can say here is it's a shame about anders uh, not not casting that is as good a set of casters in any esport in the world right now that's as good as anything that's like everyone there is at the top of their game right now at the peak of their powers four out of the eight are essentially if you think about it you know contextually sort of newer casters right like people with not a super long history not a long history of doing stadiums but like lots of energy it's just really really good that's like just that is an elite level like that's as good as anything we've ever had in csgo historically so definitely cannot grumble about that uh they're all the right names that should be on the list the only sad thing for me is uh anders not casting now I'm not going to give any spoilers, because I don't know, I haven't talked to anyone, uh, everyone's been travelling and prepping and getting paperwork, and some motherfuckers are on the anti-malarials, so it's like, you know, <laughs> whatever, they, they, they send you bandy, uh, they're, they're a real good time, uh, for anyone who knows what I'm talking about, if you've ever had anti-malarials, the fucking dreams you get when you're popping them bad boys, but anyway, the one thing I'll say is, I'm, they'll put Anders on a cast, you can't have a major without Anders casting at least one game. So I'm, I'm sure he'll get a game. ESL break up the, the duos all the time and swap people about. I'm sure Anders is going to cast the game. Uh, it won't be a high-profile game. He's not been hired in that role and that capacity. But, uh, yeah, I, I, Anders, Anders will cast the game, and I think that's appropriate. Just get him in there. Put him with Sadakis. Put him with Moses. You know, like, all time's sake. Like... A, a, a major without Anders casting, it's not a major for me, basically. Like, you know, Sadakist, Sadakist is the greatest in terms of just, like, skill to do it. But Anders is the OG. You know what I mean? Like, if, so if Sadakist is, like, an Eminem, uh, Anders is, like, a fucking, you know, raw Kim. He's, like, the OG guy, like, an absolute legend, you know? So you got to have him cast at some point. The architect role. Now, I, I haven't had time to talk to Anders. Like, legit, I haven't talked to any of these guys except uh, I think I talked to Alan briefly on Twitter. And that's it. Yeah, I haven't talked to any guys. Remember as well, I had all that fucking drama this week. So I haven't been particularly active on social media. because I, just, I just wanted to stay away from the internet and just, you know, try and get my head straight. But the architect role. I'm pretty sure this is linked to something to do with um, Skybox. Uh, he said for a long time he wants to create better segments and do better technical stuff and, you know, be more front and center on that uh, and show what the technology can do because, you know, Skybox is developing all the time and Anders is aware that, you know, he loves casting, right? Like, he'll tell you, if you ever talk to him, he says, like, for him, if, if, if all his life was just casting forever until he died, he, that, that for him would be the best life imaginable. Like, he couldn't... But but obviously, reality isn't like that. You know, opportunity is going to go to other people, younger people. You know, as you get older, you've got family, you got you know, you don't want to be on the road as much. And so he's got other things on his plate now with the projects. The Skybox is a big one of them. So I think you know he's going to go like uh, and and do some like super cool, super interesting stuff. And you will see him on a broadcast. I don't think it's just going to be skits. I don't think it's just there as a meme. I think it's going to be a really interesting part of the show because again talking to esl staff they know they know how underwhelming some of their shit's been this year they and they're all telling me rio's gonna be amazing you know they're telling me everyone is going balls out for rio all the budget's been unleashed they're like they're gonna put on like this unbelievable event 
And so whatever, you know, if you do it, you do it. And and I hope that's true. But yeah, Anders is going to be involved doing that. And that's fine, you know, like, I'm, I'm again, I, they had to find a way to include Anders because Anders is God when it comes to CS. So The analysts. Don't need to say too much about this. Yanko, Maniac, Maui and Blair. They are all now established major talent. Yanko and Maniac, of course, being the ultimate duo. Wonderful, compliment each other. I've said it multiple times. Maui's in a you know category of his own. And what I'm loving about Maui, he's getting into the take machine, isn't he? He comes out with wild opinions. He doesn't give a fuck about pandering to you. I like that, you know? There is, like... You know, at the end of The Wire, like, at the very last episode, they do the final montage as McNulty's driving that uh, disabled homeless man back across the bridge, the one he kidnapped to fake the serial killer. And they do this montage, and what it shows you is that nothing is going to change in Baltimore, that all the characters that have died have been replaced. There's a new Bodie on the corner. There's a new Omar coming up. There's, you know, Dookie's going to become the new Bubbles. And it's this idea that the more things change, the more they stay the same. You know, Maui, for me, I think... A bold prediction. I think Maui will become the new Thorin at some point. I think he's having this, like... And, and he can't be everything Thorin was. I just mean purely in terms of a broadcast analysis. Uh, a, a, a broadcast analyst, I should say, rather. Um, because, obviously, Thorin was, like... A legendary journalist, you know, a legendary interviewer, a guy that come up with all types of content, ran one of the biggest content coverage hubs all by himself. So much so when he left that job as an editor, they had to hire like four people to do his job. You know, like he, he, he's, he's done all sorts of, of incredible shit. But just in terms of the broadcast, where you're going to get the spice from right now, Maui's getting more and more comfortable with it. And I think, like, in a few years, he's going to be the guy who fucking says a player looks like Gollum, or fuck this guy, or this guy's a fraud, or he's going to have a nice little heated debate with someone. He's going to be sent to Maniac. Nah, nah, you're wrong. You're fucking talking shit. I think Maui's going to get there, 100%. You know, he spends all that time with Duncan on that show. You watch. That's my prediction. Blair as well. He's never scared of giving a spicy take. So I like that. Uh, Kassad coming in, it's interesting. One of the things I should have talked about in the G2 uh, video, I forgot. I made notes for Prem Review, but I didn't make notes for anything else I was talking about. This is all off the top of the dome. But uh, I, I'm pretty sure Kassad is going to go in and become, you know, the, the coach G2. It feels to me like that's uh, a possibility there. He's got a good ties with Nico. Um, he's still highly thought of. Seems to me to be a natural choice. Cassad to G2. I don't know if that's right. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm just coming up with ideas. I mean, I think G2 haven't made a decision yet because I've heard from a few other people that they're going to have a big interview process and the executives are going to get involved. But I could see Cassad going and coaching G2. I don't think that'd be crazy. I think Cassad is like a guy that he's more like a traditional sports coach for me. So... I've seen him on um, on a lot of desks. Obviously, he's done a lot of pro league. I think he needs to just get to that next level. He only really feels truly at his best when he's got Yanko to play off. You know, listen, he's got a fantastic mind for the game. But what I, what I want him to do is focus more on that. Remember, you're coming in as a fucking ex-coach, essentially. A current coach, potentially. I want to hear coach-like thoughts. I want to I want to get that stuff out here. I don't, I don't, like, I don't want to hear you, like, laugh and joke, like, as much. You know, like, a little bit, yeah, no bother. But I want to hear you fucking, like, say, like, when I was coaching this team and we used to do this and no, no, no. I want an anecdote I want a fucking bit of insight I want to be well you might not know it about this player but actually when he was on this team we used to do scrims and we used to go and bully that motherfucker on that site in this position because he's actually bad at it and this is why that's the shit I want out of an ex-coach on a sports broadcast you know what I mean he can give it to you but you know hasn't done it the interesting ones at the end Alan Ender I like Alan obviously we had him at no majors club Alan Ender is a guy uh, that, uh, you know, is really, really good analytical stuff. Obviously been involved with, like, you know, Endpoint, other teams, proving himself. 
him being at a major. He obviously is super grateful about it as well. He like tweeted out, you know, wow, like all the hours, you know, all the grinding to get here, like I'm gonna do this like huge major. Could be the biggest major at all time. Certainly almost, I, I can't imagine it won't break the viewership record. Uh, it seems to me a major in Brazil, especially if a Brazilian team gets a deep run or Team Liquid gets a deep run, it's gonna break all the viewership records. It's going to be fucking insane. Even with the dip we've had from Russian viewership and everything else, it's going to be the biggest major of all time. So for Alan to be there, uh, it's it's fantastic. Uh, and yeah, of course, obviously, Maui, Alan, uh, you know, guys like this, uh, or, you know, Duncan was one of the dudes that was bringing them up at Flashpoint. Peacemaker. This is an interesting uh, one for me. Like, I totally understand why he's there even on the english broadcast because i think people aren't understanding this is the english broadcast and the brazilian broadcast is obviously like the players that they might want to bring on for a desk and do a segment here and that like let's say you know fallen goes out with a tournament early well you want him on the fucking show don't you but he's probably going to go and do the brazilian broadcast and do the stuff that's like live in the stadium and everything else so Pe peacemaker is respected tenured brazilian talent fluent english you know coached in europe coached in brazil um knows a lot of the teams a lot of the players it's his first broadcast role i'm led to believe but for me you know what i think it's a good pick it's, it shows a little bit of creativity this is the kind of this is the kind of wild card pick i would throw out like if i was doing e-league or whatever you know like it, this is 100 percent a, a solid pickup uh i'm i'm behind it big time i think it's gonna be interesting and if i was hosting it i'd be leaning on him all the time especially early on in the tournaments where whenever a brazilian team plays when 9z play i want him there you know remember this guy like was coaching imperial uh, not that long ago you know i want to get i want to pick all of his motherfucking brains what's changed what are the tendencies what's this what's that blah blah so I think, I think it's actually a really good pick. Uh, and I hope that he doesn't get, like, stage fright or any of that shit. I know the dude. Uh, he seems to be a pretty confident guy. Um, and, you know, he's certainly not shy about giving his opinions. This could be the fucking, like, pick off the desk, actually, in terms of, like, you've got your ones who have to work it in, in the ones that maybe could or could not be there. Peacemaker's probably the most interesting pick and it'll probably be the most successful. This is the one, Mahon. Right, this is the one where everyone gets upset. Right, and it's not Mahone's fault. But here's the thing. Every time Reddit spits in my face for being something, but then you don't spit in the face of the other person who is the same thing, I hate that person. Because you are just a nebulous crowd. So I, I have to go after them. And so it's not fair, right? It's not fair. <laughs> but what, right, but here's why. I thought to be an analyst, right, this is what Reddit told me all my life, remember I've been an analyst at majors, started on the desk as an analyst before I became a host, everyone used to tell me kill yourself, like literally every day I was doing analysis, kill yourself, you do not know what you're talking about, you should not be talking about this game, you fucking golden over scrub, kill yourself, kill, that's what I used to get every day, every single day, in Twitch chat, in DMs, every single fucking day that's what people used to say to me because i'd never been on a pro team so that's the standard right that's the standard i was brought up in i saw it with duncan duncan doesn't know what he's talking about duncan's never been global i right? don't you know duncan duncan can't analyze the game all duncan does is give hot takes all duncan does is read liquipedia pages right so all of that for years and years and years and years and years. Uh, so when I moved to the hosting role, I had to move to the hosting role. But should he even be a host? His knowledge is so weak. He's never played on a pro team. How can he even host an event? I remember I stopped streaming CS back when we used to play. Because I used to play with the guys in Europe. Anders and Vince and Duncan and, uh, and Sam. And we used to play. We used to do these streams. But I was playing on like 120, 150 ping. And, uh, you know, so I would always bottom frag and I would like, you know, you could see on the screen when you watch me, like I'd be warping around and stuff like that. Right. And so anyway, people literally wrote to E-League. This is a hundred, this is again, a hundred percent true. People contacted E-League saying, I have just seen your desk host, uh, playing a game 
and he is like Master Guardian One or whatever it was. How can you how can you hire this man? I will not be watching your broadcast. You used to get shit like that, like for real. So that's what I've been brought up in. So Mahone has never been a pro player, right? He's he's not been in the scene long at all. He's never coached a team. Well, no, sorry, yeah, he was at NIP, I think, as an analyst or a coach. But you know, he's never he's never owned an all. He's never ran a team. He's never coached a team. He's never been a GM of a team. You know, he's not got twenty years in the scene. So all of the criticism you've leveled at me, I'm now going to level at him. He's not. He's obviously not fit to do the job, Reddit, is he? How can he be? You've told me. Me and Duncan can't do it. So why is everyone sucking this guy's dick? It's not his fault, by the way, as I keep saying. It's not not his fault. But, obviously, he did piss me off a little bit as well, where he, uh, in that fucking letter defending Peacemaker, you remember when we did that stream, and he was, like, saying, I am totally impartial, was working for the same org, of course, and there is absolutely no way that this could be uh, using the bug. And it's like, yeah. So, piss me off with that as well, because that was disingenuous, and, you know, I don't fuck with that. Uh, even if he was doing it. You know, at the end of the day, him just leapfrogging to being an analyst at a major desk by virtue of, you know, this weird fucked up, you know, let's all be pals for now, red until the red wedding ESL blast bullshit. I don't like it. I wouldn't hire him. <laughs> so there you go. I don't care how much you like his YouTube segments or whatever. He needs knocking down a peg or two. Seems to be a bit above his station for me. So there you go. You're, you're, you're super upset now. Sideline. I saw people sad that Shocks, the queen of esports, uh, wasn't hosting the event. And uh, she can't, unfortunately, because it overlaps with uh, all the work she's been doing at Worlds. And we're lucky to be getting her, uh, we're, we're lucky to be getting her at all, even for a little bit. But, you know, she really wanted to be at the major. Obviously, she uh, has been to Brazil many times, loves going to Brazil. So it's a, a, a perfect marriage. And yeah, she gets to continue uh, the, the major streak. And she's going to be there. So um, I'm, I'm happy. She's going to be doing a sideline report. For those who've never seen her in that role, if you've only seen her as a desk host, she absolutely nails that role as well. She's a fantastic interviewer, very natural. Not a lot of people have that, uh, you know, uh, twin skills she could she could have easily done that as a career she could have been she could have done that as a, one of those like uh broadcast journalist sideline reporters and honestly i think she's good enough and polished enough to do it outside of esports in that role so she, she's gonna be good heku the criticism i see heku get always makes me really really sad because i think heku's great i think heku's not afraid to joke around with players and it comes in a more natural way than some other people people i've seen who tried to do it down down the years but she's got an accent and because she's got an accent she gets the yanko treatment and it's the same thing i saw with yanko you get a bunch of fucking americans uh you get a bunch of americans and a bunch of europeans and they hear like any anything like you know well, once we start getting to like hungary poland the baltics once we start once we once we start getting that far out the accent gets a little bit thicker everyone's like oh no 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 you can't understand him can't understand him it's just like nah that's like that's absolute bullshit and i hated that and i hated the way yanko got fucking treated for that by an american audience and overlooked for a major he really should have been there for and i'm glad we got him at boston so yeah i really like heku i think she's great i think uh, lots of skills obviously speaks multiple languages really does fun segments all the players like her as well from what i've heard she really does like happy to mingle and talk to people and stuff and i've never worked an event with her but um yeah i think she's a solid pick on the sideline i really like her so and then obviously banks well, it's an esports event, so as it is mandated in the great book of esports, you must hire James Banks. <laughs> you just have to. Uh, it's the rules. So there, there it is. Uh, it's obviously Banks is obviously there. Uh, it's an esports event, isn't it? Joking aside, this is his role for me. I don't like it when he's hosting on a desk. I think he has a tendency to talk a little bit too much, which is a desk host you're not supposed to. But uh, sideline reporter, he, you know, all the players like him. He gets some interesting answers, had some good moments. Uh, if he could cut that Na'Vi Nation shit out, that would be nice. <laughs> but, you know, whatever. Uh, everyone seems to like that. You know, at the end of the day, yeah, it's, it's Banks working an esports event.
Overall, I think it is up there. I think um, it would be a stronger. It would be. It would. It would be stronger if Shocks was hosting. Somebody else maybe in the sideline. I could switch up one or two analysts. Maybe make a few hail mary picks. Remember, by the way, I, I reckon there'll be some surprises. Like I saw Get Right tweeting. Uh, what was it? Get Right tweeting. He said, "See, you not know, everyone at Rio makes me want to travel there right now." Get right in Forest, you know, like they'll they've done desks now, and so I, I could I could see one of them turning up and doing a doing a desk uh, segment or two, and I think that'd be great. So I you'll see I think you'll see some legendary pros uh, t turn up, and obviously yeah you've got that show match that came out that's going to be there. They'll probably get some broadcast time out of the guys playing in that. But look, in general, I'm I'm happy. I'm happy with this. Uh, I think this is a really good broadcast team. And uh, I don't know. Does anybody have they said where they're going to be? Because they're in Brazil, but they're are they in? But they're in a studio, right? Is it in the hotel or something? I, don't, I really don't know what's going on. Like I feel like I've just been in a bubble. So if anyone can fill me in on what's going on, because they haven't said much about it, and it makes me it makes me a little bit nervous. These remote broadcasts, not at the venue. Because there are extra moving parts that can go wrong with it. And, you know, you've seen all of that now just with the TI. Which, by the way, it hasn't felt like a TI, has it at all? <laughs> the games have been good at least. But, yeah. Yeah, it was good to see two good back. Maybe he'll come on the fucking podcast now. He's been stringing me along since the 2nd of November 2021. Yeah, you, James. You said you were coming on on the set. It's still up there on the whiteboard. So, I, I don't know. I, I don't know where they're, they're going to be. Uh, but there must be a nearby studio they're going to be in. If they're actually at the venue, great. If they do the English-speaking broadcast from within the venue and it comes out to us, but just doesn't go out to the Brazilian audience, that's the that's what you want. That's the best. That's you know, obviously the best is you know if everyone spoke one common language and understood each other and we didn't have to you know cater to home crowds and stuff like that for obvious reasons it should be in in the, in the stadium it should be in portuguese if they're in and you can hear the crowd noise and stuff coming through that'll be the best that'll be the best and hopefully that's what we get but yeah i'm, I'm very very pleased with this like you know uh petty grievance aimed at Mahone for nothing he's done really uh aside uh you know i'm i'm very very pleased and uh, feel that uh, this is going to be actually uh you know as, as as good a broadcast as you could have got right now you know listen i'd love i'd love my boy duncan to be there you know what i mean i'd obviously love to see him but just not happening unfortunately uh so it's a shame